it won't string like that if it, it and form little hairs if it uh if it's too if it's too if there's not enough fat in it. If it's too uh too hard it'll, it'll just get really brittle. Um, and then let me just lick my finger. And uh, from here I usually just get my finger wet, spitty, something like that. And I'll scoop this up in my hand. Oh, I won't burn myself at this point. But this one's way too sticky. See how like it's Not just sticking fat. all over? It's got too much fat. Too much fat. Too much fat. So I'm gonna remelt it again. Get more of the pitch worked into it. Mm, but you can see progress from where you were. Oh, it's a lot better. Before it was just all liquid. So but the other thing I can do too is there's still a lot of turpentine in this. I can cook it for longer. So I can, there's a few different ways you can do it, but it's all the right matter of ratios. Mm -hmm. If I cook this, I, if I left this on here overnight, it doesn't matter how much fat I add to it, it's gonna dry rock hard, and I go to bend it, it's just gonna crumble into dust. So the percentage of turpentine gives it some of its elasticity. It does, and the ultimate way to do it is actually remove all the, the best way to do it, and what I usually do when I have lots of time is I cook. All, I try to cook as much of the turpentine out as possible, get it really, really hard, and then bring the fat back. And the reason why is because the turpentine is volatile. So if I take it and I put it with the turpentine on my canoe, it'll work fine. But eventually, after about three, four months, it's going to dissipate in the air and the stuff's going to crumble. But if you cook all that out and you add the fat back in, the fat doesn't evaporate over time. It, it remains in there, so it keeps its elasticity for much, much longer. Eventually, the off pitch gets brittle. And you have to replace it.